19 to 3 is our halftime score in Nebraska leading Missouri and that snaps a string of 20 consecutive games in which Missouri led at halftime. I'm Ron Thulin joined again by Artie Gigantino. You talk about the specialty team mistakes but the bottom line is Missouri cannot run against this Nebraska defense. No they can't Ron. They've got to establish a running game because they're not going to get back into this game unless they run the football and on the other side of the coin their defense has got to control Eric Crouch because right now he's got 60 yards rushing and he's the key to this Nebraska offense. Well, you take a look at the numbers you can see just how futile the attempts were rushing the football only 39 yards passing for Missouri 13 rushing we'll talk more about the stats as the second half continues but Larry Smith still thinks he's in the game Eric Clemens you just spent some time with him what did Larry say yeah coach Larry Smith felt his team gave Nebraska 16 of its 19 points in the first half he simply said we got to play Missouri football especially when we have it on offense we'll see what they can do here in the second half they need to do something guys Thank you very much, Eric. You were absolutely right. And it may start right now with this kickoff and a good defensive stand by Missouri. That would help him immensely. Larry Smith saying that he thought he gave them all the 19 points. Not sure about that, but we know for sure he did give them at least nine points. Well, you give them nine on the two bad snaps, and then you give them another one on the interception. So Nebraska's been playing on a short field. This is Randy Stella. Makes his way up to about the 24 yard line and that is where Nebraska will take over first and 10. I what do you think of Nebraska will do here in the second? I think they're going to come out and run options. I think this young man Eric Crouch is going to crank up the option. Frank Solich knows he's into a little bit of a rhythm right now in calling plays but also in getting Eric Crouch going. Like I said he rushed for 60 yards so far in the first half. Look for a lot of option football here in the second half by Nebraska because you know against Southern Mississippi a week ago they only had 185 yards total offense and they only had 51 total offensive plays so they want to crank up this offensive machine tonight and they start on the ground straight ahead banging his way Dan Alexander out of Wentzville Missouri not really a slasher as far as runner but he does combine great speed and some pretty good strength you know what I like about him too in 1996 he was the state heavyweight wrestling champion not bad. and you know that's balance and if a guy is a running back and a wrestler I think they go hand in hand because it really helps his balance he is an impressive looking physical specimen you see him and you say whoa what NFL team does he play linebacker <laughs> for and he has worked extremely hard to come back from those knee surgeries Pick up a five on the play, second and five. Here comes the option. Crouch faking the pitch, crosses the 30 up to about the 33 yard line. Will be about a yard short of the first down. Barry Odom, the senior out of Ada, Oklahoma, comes up with the stop. But the play was really made by Big 96 again. Watch Justin Smith right here. He's going to string it out, string it out. He's playing cat and mouse with Eric Crouch. Cat and mouse. And he looks inside and he rips. He takes his towel off, but he doesn't grab him. But he made the play so the rest of his buddies, Barry Odom, number one, had time to get there. Big time play by a defensive end. And here is the first big play of the second half. Third down and one for Nebraska. Missouri just overran it. And the first down is there for the Huskers. Well, Chamonte Robinson, number 55, blitzed the gap that time, and he ran right by the ball. And that's what happens sometimes when you blitz. And Smith on the tackle. Watch 55. He's right up in there. He runs right past it, gets nicked a little bit by the fullback. But when you blitz into the backfield, sometimes you create seams. He's trying, though, and I thought yeah. it was a good call by the defensive coaches. Well, they weren't expected to blitz that much in the ball game, but first and ten for Nebraska. Crouch is going to mix it up on first down. The pass thrown behind the intended receiver, Matt Davison. Eric Crouch is an excellent athlete. He does a lot of things very, very well. In fact, in high school, when he was a senior, he was second in the state of Nebraska in the 100-yard dash. And that's amazing. And the guy who won it was Erwin Sweeney, who's an injured defensive back for Nebraska. This young man is an excellent, excellent all-around athlete. You know, talking to Frank Solich last night, he said that he really believes that this young man will have a great career at Nebraska as a quarterback. I do too. The pitch to Bobby Newcomb, the former quarterback, dives his way, leans forward up to the 44-yard line. Julian Jones got a piece of him. 
And we talked about Bobby Newcomb last night and how he handled this whole situation. The, the school of thought, I think, nowadays in the 90s, you get demoted, in his case, it would be considered a motion from first-team quarterback. You'd start to whine and moan a little bit. That is not the case for Bobby Newcomb, who is a very special individual. Well, I believe that it was a mutual decision between Frank Solich, the head football coach, and Bobby Newcomb to move to wingback. Frank did not make him do it. Bobby wanted to do it for the benefit of this football team. Third down and two for the Huskers. Krause keeps it. Leans forward and may have gotten the first down. It is going to be close. If it is short, it'll be by about two feet. He tried to reach with the football, and it depends where the spot is. But, you know, he gets on the perimeter so fast, and he can see an opening up inside. He just takes it. And that's one of the keys for Missouri. You can't allow him to get to the outside and talking to the de defensive players and coaches. Number one key, we can't allow Eric Crouch to dominate this football. Right. Game. you got to control him, and if you're going to be successful on defense against the option, you got to stop the quarterback first. I've always believed that. And it is a first down. Now, this has been two third and short situation so far in this series. The Missouri defense is playing well. They've just come up a little bit short, but they're playing well right now. I think I agree 100%. They've given up a lot of yards, as we mentioned. They've been playing a lot of run and gun, run and shoot offenses the last couple of weeks. But they've done a nice job on this big offensive line in Nebraska. Now, here's Nebraska spread out. they got two receivers at the top and one at the bottom. Drops the pump thing. Looking deep. Let's it fly. Has a man there. Caught by Newcomb. Touchdown, Nebraska. He dropped a touchdown pass last week. Eric Grouch said this week, I owe Bobby Newcomb a touchdown toss. And the two quarterbacks give a hug. His first reception is a touchdown. Bobby Newcomb is an excellent athlete. He's fast, and he can outrun secondary players. And he did a nice job that time of slowing down and catching the football, but the ball was thrown perfectly. London on the hold, Brown on the extra point, gets inside the upright. But Bobby Newcomb, the junior out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, a sport sport athlete in high school shows his track speed on the touchdown catch. Newcomb's first career touchdown reception, and it was a big one. And that'll make up for that drop last week against Southern Mississippi. It'll be Ricardo Rhodes five yards deep, and he'll sit down on it. But the job was really done in the first two seconds of that play. Eric Crouch did a great job with a pump fake, and Missouri just bit at it. A lot of little things happen in the touchdown play. Now, you're going to see Bobby Newcomb right there. He's going to run in the slot. He's pointing down the field. But watch Jones right here, the safety. He is going to bite on what he thinks is going to be an underneath pattern, and he gets out of his deep middle zone, and as a result, Bobby Newcomb runs right by Carlos Posey for the touchdown. He had no help in the middle from his free safety. Spencer in motion on the near side. Farmer a little play action. Looking for somebody. Aaron Willis runs right by him, and Farmer makes lemonades out of lemons. Willis did recover. You can see what Missouri has done on first down. Just over three and a half yards, but Nebraska at 8.8. .8. And that's a great average to have on first down, obviously. And in Missouri, you know, we talked about it at the beginning, wanted to get five or six yards as an average on first down so you didn't let that Nebraska defense tee off on you in passing situations. And it'll be second and short, so they got about nine on that play. Straight ahead, good for the first down, and Missouri starting to run it. Devon Black, the senior out of St. Louis, Missouri, on the carry. Averaging just over 172 yards a game rushing the football. That's fourth in the NCAA, but he is having his problems tonight. You know, you look at Farmer. Now, he's a scratch golfer. He bench presses 420 pounds, and he squats 600. He's an all-around athlete. I've never heard of a quarterback that can bench 420. He's strong. 
Probably the better runner of the two. Pitches back. Black able to get it. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard on the play. Mike Brown comes up from that rover spot to make the stop. Well, tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific, it's the NFL Pacific on Fox Sports Net. Second down, we'll call it nine. Farmer looking to run the action. And he is not going to be able to pitch it because big number 96, Steve Warren, the senior out of Springfield, Missouri, comes up with the stop. And he's a dominator inside. And when he gets into a gap, he's hard to control. You see him here to the left of your screen, come up the field and just takes Farmer down like a bag and throw him to the ground. But that's a big man coming up the field with great agility. And I'll tell you, Bob Riddy, the center, tries to chop him, and it doesn't even affect Warren. He just keeps moving up the field. That's a great play by Farmer, though. The young quarterback yeah, had the poise to hold on to the football. Absolutely. Didn't pitch it. But it does set up a third down and long. We'll call it 15. Look out. Hit as he throws it, and it will be incomplete. Kirk Farmer had absolutely no chance on that play. Julius Jackson came right over Devon Black. Yeah, he was confused as to where to throw it and who to throw it to. Well, you're going to see Chris Kelsey here, number 57, just come in and just knock him down. And, well, I, I, again, I don't think Farmer knew who to throw it to. He throws it to one of his linemen, Aaron Crittenden, but he's an ineligible receiver. And it hit him in the head. He wasn't even looking at the ball. But that's a lot of pressure for a young quarterback going back, and you've got about five Nebraska defensive linemen staring at you. Joe Walker standing at his 35-yard line. Gilpin again will punt it away. He is at about his 12. Nebraska's showing a rush, but this time they back off. Gilpin, a line driver. Walker from his 35. Slips down at about the 37-yard line, 38 yards on the kick, two on the return, and Nebraska with a 26-3 lead, looking for their 100th win of the decade. They lead Missouri. Turner Gill, once a great quarterback for the University of Nebraska. They thought Bobby Newcomb would be the next Turner Gill. Now, of course, he's one of the coaches on the sidelines with Frank Solich. As Nebraska begins, first and 10 from their own 37-yard line. Eric Crouch, a couple of touchdown passes, has run for one. And they're going to keep it on the ground, trying that right side. Dan Alexander barrels his way up to the 50. Pickup of 12 on the play, another first down. Eric Crouch made that play because he ran an audible at the line of scrimmage because he felt Missouri did not have enough players to the right of his offensive formation, ran a lead option, pitched the ball, and got obviously 12 yards. Another first down for Nebraska, just flexing their muscles. Straight ahead, good for about three on the play. You talk about winning traditions in the 90s. The name Nebraska comes to mind very, very quickly because their tradition has included a lot of winnings. Of course, the, the national championships, three out of four years. Under Coach Tom Osborne, you can see Florida State at 100. Nebraska could tie them today, at least momentarily, with their 100th win, and Florida with 96 wins. In the, 90s. the records go on and on. They've been to 30 straight bowl games, but that is very impressive right there. 100 wins in the 90s. Crouch gives it first man through the fullback. That is big Willie Miller. And penalty flags are flying. We have some late hits. And you can't lose your composure when you're trailing a football game by a bundle. Well, a guy like Willie, Willie Miller is hard to bring down. He keeps spinning and churning his legs, and sometimes defenders don't know if he's been stopped. Well, the officials are going to talk it over. Talked about the 30 consecutive bowl games, an NCAA record. How about 30 straight nine win or more seasons? Also an NCAA record for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty, and then it's third down. A little overzealous that time by Dominic Rayola, the center. You know, he's a guy that tries real hard. Watch him right here, number 54. Boom, get away from there. Now, he, he's had 35 pancakes this year, which is when an offensive lineman knocks a defensive lineman to the ground. But those 35 pancakes coming in were before the whistle was blown. That was clearly a late hit. But you know what? 
I love it when offensive linemen protect their running backs and their quarterbacks. Absolutely. But the coaches won't like it. <laughs> well, last year, Nebraska had fewest penalties in the Big 12. This year, they're not so lucky, averaging about seven penalties over 61 yards a game. And that is a concern for Frank Solis. Close again on eight minutes. Crouch lets the rush come in. Davison with the reception. Gets up to about the 48-yard line. A wide receiver screen. And what it is, that's like a running play to this Nebraska offense. It's a quick throw out. It's a high percentage of the completions on that. And you hope that Davidson catches it and runs up the football field. Well, Nebraska has outscored their first three opponents 107 to 20. They're doing a good job defensively tonight. Looks like they're putting a lot of points on the board. But they are going to be forced to kick it away. Hayden Feld has done a nice job. Marty Johnson standing at his own 10. High, high kick. Johnson back pedaling to the five. Calls the fair catch, and that's where he'll have the football. You know how you say baseball pitchers have major league arms? This guy's got a major league leg. Well, it has been Eric Crouch's night tonight, no question about it, in only his second start of the year. He has done it running the football, and he's done it throwing the football. To Davison for the touchdown. Showing some accuracy. And then, of course, he also did it on the ground with this run for the touchdown in the first half. You look at him and you say, all-round athlete, as he throws the ball down the field to Bobby Newcomb. Does a lot of things very, very well. He may be coming into his own tonight. This may be quite a breakthrough game for this young man. You can see 67 yards rushing the football. Missouri has it trying to cut into that Nebraska lead, but that Nebraska defense is so stingy. Zane Gilmore out of Tampa, Florida, just a sophomore, not much running room. Maybe picked up two or three on the play. You know, Happy Gilmore, as his teammates call him, is six foot one, 220 pounds. And as we talked about before, he's a fast guy. He can make you miss in the open field. Next year, he will be a star at the tailback position for Missouri. If you look at him standing on the sideline during practice, he is a big guy. He is well built. Straight ahead, Gilmore trying to show some, some power. Well, speaking of some pretty good passing, how about today earlier, Oklahoma against Louisville of Conference USA. Of course, Bob Stoops led by quarterback Josh Heppel. Four hangs when you say Oklahoma <laughs> is leading the country or amongst the leaders in passing offense. Last time they wanted to pass, they recruited a kid by the name of Troy Aikman out of Henrietta, Oklahoma. Gordy, no place to go, but he does have it complete. The football is loose. Nebraska comes up with a loose ball. Julius Jackson on the recovery. Brandon Ford had the completion, coughed it up, and Jackson comes up with the loose ball. He returned a fumble last week for a touchdown. He has an interception and a fumble recovery tonight. Well, he's a big play guy. Every time something negative happens on the opponent's offense, number 50 is around the football. Now, you're going to see Ford here. He catches the ball, and he just gets it knocked out by Ralph Brown, number 22. The ball is on the ground, and because Jackson's hustling, he gets to the football. But Ralph Brown does just a great job of reaching in, knocking it out, and his counterpart, Mike Brown, comes over and helps jar loose. And the quarterback says, oh, man. Darty just says, hey, nothing's going right tonight. A very costly turnover. Nebraska now inside the 30 down to the 27-yard line. Jackson, the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week this past week. You know, Ron, when you look at a play like that, to me, that wasn't a fumble. That was a caused fumble, you know, by the defense. There was a couple of good hits that knocked the ball loose. The defense earned that one. The offense didn't give it up. The defense earned that one. Julius wants to be an attorney. Right now, he's the martial law tonight. Second down and eight for Nebraska. Okay, this is an audible at the line of scrimmage. Crouch with the pitch. Back to Buckholder. Left side, looks at the 20, inside down to the 18-yard line. Keeps the feet moving and keeps spinning. Crouch. Now, what Crouch does at the line of scrimmage, he's reading. Now, you're going to see number eight, Clarence Jones. He's coming across. He takes Crouch. Crouch dishes the ball off. 
Obviously, Buck Kohler doesn't get tackled in the alley, gets up the field for a positive game. But that is all on the quarterback, reading it and get, getting caught in a blitz. Missouri got caught in a blitz. And it was a gain of nine, sets up a first and ten, and again, Nebraska knocking on the door. They already have a 53-yard TD toss here in the second half. Crouch keeps it down to the 15, the 14-yard line. Justin Smith showing his speed again, catching him from behind. Justin Smith is the kind of player, too, that presses. Wouldn't you say that things may not be going well, and instead of trying to go through the door, he decides to go through the wall. Yeah, but I like guys like that. I Hey, give me 100 guys like that any day of the week because he plays full speed. Last year, he was a little bit of a diamond in the rough, but this year, and certainly in this game, he's a shining diamond right now. And now I know why they call him Godzilla. Tyrone Euler has checked in at fullback, joining Carell Buckholder. Whistles are blowing. You know, going back to Smith for a second, I talked about in the open, he was the biggest recruit in Larry Smith's tenure here as a head coach. And one of the reasons he came here is his sister's here. His sister Sarah is a Tiger hostess, and she influenced Justin to come to the University of Missouri. Well, the officials talked it over, no penalty. They were checking the clock. They want to make sure it was all reset, so Nebraska will have it. Second down and seven from the 15-yard line of the Tigers. Missouri fans were expecting a lot better tonight. Crouch keeps it. He is not afraid to take a hit as he gets down to the 10-yard line. And Crouch is six foot, but he is a solid 200 pounds, and you have to be solid to take the hits that a Nebraska quarterback takes. And look at him right here. Look at that. He's got bigger shoulder pads than most quarterbacks. He's got running back shoulder pads, and he uses them, obviously, for protection because he knows he's going to be carrying the ball an average of about 20 times per game. But this is a complicated offense to learn, and right now he's showing evidence that he's got great command of this offense. An offense that has averaged better than 35 points a game 12 of the last 13 years. Crouch with the pitch, tiptoe down the sideline, Buck Palmer tries to get in. Touchdown, Nebraska! Well, they forced the pitch, Artie. Clarence Jones again from his safety position. He's up in there, but the ball gets dished off, and Buckholter makes it into the end zone. That might have been in the Simon era that time in the Missouri defense because you had two players on the quarterback. You need some inside-out rundown to the tailback. I tell you, I think his foot was out of bounds. That replay showed that he was tiptoeing on the line. One of the linesmen got absolutely hammered on the play and couldn't see it. Well, I think the crowd agrees with you. I'm, I'm always the hometown guy. Josh Brown kicks the extra point with 3.31 to play in the third quarter. Nebraska's hung 14 on Missouri here in the third. Our score, 33-3. Sixty-eight thousand one hundred seventy-four in attendance, and outside of the thirty-five hundred Nebraska fans, they did not like that touchdown. Doesn't matter. Threes are the numbers. Thirty-three to three is our score with three thirty-one left to play in the third. And once again, Ricardo Rhodes and Travis Garvin have to receive this kick. That's going to sail out of bounds. Penalty flag will be tossed. That might be Nebraska's first mistake on special teams tonight. Well, Hayden Belt's first mistake. Let's take a look at that touchdown again, and it appeared on the replay, once again, we have the luxury that he stepped out twice. Well, he might have right there. Look at that. He's right on the end line, which means he's out of bounds. So that's one. And right there. He's out of bounds again. So I, maybe the fans were right, but... Yeah. And the lineman, you saw him stumbling on the first time, and it looked like he got hit and just couldn't see exactly. Didn't have time to get his bearings, and it's, that's a tough job to do. Well, because the ball was out of bounds, Missouri will take over first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. The offense that was high octane and running on all cylinders last week is clogged, mainly because of that Nebraska defense. Gordy, the quarterback, pitches back, not much running room. 
Well, there have been a lot of distractions for the Nebraska Cornhuskers the last couple of weeks. Of course, D'Angelo Evans leaving the team, then Frank Solich deciding not to take him back. The controversy with Bobby Newcomb, and of course with Eric Crouch. A lot of controversy, but this team is so resilient, and I think it starts at top. Well, when you communicate with your team about problems, the team believes you as a head football coach, and I think that's what Frank Solich did a week ago. And sometimes adversity can bring a team together. And I think that's happened a little bit here tonight with the Nebraska. On second and 10, straight ahead, not much running room. And last night we had a chance to spend some time with Frank Solich and he talked about the leadership on this team and the resiliency of the Huskers. I like the makeup of, uh, of our football team. I, I think they're tremendous in terms of their work ethic, what they've done in the offseason to prepare for this year. Um, and they, are, they really have an excellent chemistry. So uh, I feel very good about our team. You know, every team has problems. Exactly. It's just in Nebraska, when you have a problem, everybody's going to know about it because they are scrutinized so much by the media. So, you know, he's done a good job of handling this whole situation. And just, hey, keep your eye on the target. That's the game. And Gordy lets it fly. The pass is complete and dropped. Now they're saying it is an incomplete pass intended for Kent Lehman, the senior out of Kirkwood, Missouri. Boy, the hit was level, but we may have a late hit on Doherty, who is down. The penalty flag right at the 30-yard line. That's the reason Mike Brown, number 21, is an All-American football player, because of that type of play in breaking up a pass. He is all over this football field when the ball is in the air. Well, Doherty hurt his knee a couple of weeks ago, has been suffering. Of course, you have the backup who has playing time, so that's not a problem, but you hope that Jim Doherty's okay. And that's the advantage of having two quarterbacks that play a great deal, is you don't miss a beat, so to speak, when one goes out. Well, he's going to be helped off the field. Pass was intended for Kent Lehman, who's looking for his 25th consecutive game with a reception, which would tie the Missouri record. And so far tonight, he hasn't had it. We'll get you an update on Jim Doherty right after this. Jared Gilpin set the kick it away. And Joe Walker standing on his 20 set to receive it. The wind has calmed down here, but it is a beautiful night. Now, Walker holds an NC2A record by returning a kickoff, a punt, and an interception in one year for a touchdown. Did it last season? Did it last season. I think he's really an outstanding player. And he's, he's the nickelback, you know, for, for Nebraska. He's really a good football player. This is returnable. The ball is loose. Penalty flag is thrown, and we'll have the infamous halo rule. Didn't give Walker a whole lot of room for that 36-yard kick to be caught. And we do have a penalty, and it's going to give Nebraska even better field position. A cover man cannot be within two yards, six feet, of a punt returner when he's attempting to catch the football. It's a safety rule, and I think it's a great one. Violation of the two-yard halo will be at a five-yard penalty. First and 10. Now watch Duncan, number seven here. See, he's right there, that's too close. You gotta give him six feet in which to catch the punt. Now, you know what I love though? Did you see Bobby Newcomb, number 12, yep. come over and throw a block? Here's Bobby Newcomb that was a quarterback that's now the punt returner and a wing back protecting his buddy back there. You gotta just love that type of passion for playing the game out of Bobby Newcomb. Now that proves what kind of professional he is. Oh, absolutely. You know, that he's got Enough fortitude to step right in there and say, okay, I'm not the starting quarterback, but I'm still playing in this game. Buck Calder on the left side. He gets a couple of yards. Just a reminder, we have more college football coming your way next week. As you will see, Missouri Tigers once again versus Memphis. Memphis gave Tennessee force, I'm sure. He's got to get his team healthy again, though. You know, you got to get right. Ricky Williams back in that backfield and run the football. And Rob Peters, the quarterback, maybe out. Cook Kingsbury, maybe quarterback in the Red Raiders next week. Keeping it on the ground, and of course the offensive line in Nebraska just wearing down that defensive line. Tyrone Euler, the redshirt freshman out of Battle Creek, Nebraska on the carry. Euler. Along with Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens, I'm Ron Thulin. Welcome you back to Memorial Stadium in Perot Field in Columbia, Missouri, where the number six Nebraska Cornhuskers take it on the Missouri Tigers for the 93rd time. Missouri trying to snap a 20-game losing streak. 
to Nebraska, but right now it has been all the Huskers. 33 to 3 is our score as we are in the final seconds of quarter number three. Crouch pitches back to Buck Calder. First down, look out. Running room. Will he go? Stopped at the one yard line by Carlos Posey. That's the kind of speed Nebraska's looking for out of their eye back. The ability to take it all the way when you get the opportunity. 57 yards on the carry by Carell Buckholder. I watch Crouch get on the corner. He sees a black shirt, number eight Jones again. And look, there's no one in the quote alley right there. Missouri's got to get people inside out. Buckholder will make you miss. Now you're going to see Odom come over, number 39, but he overruns and Buckholder is off to the races. Excellent effort by Carlos Posey, number five, at chasing the big guy from Mississippi down. That is his longest run of the year, and that run alone doubled his output in the previous three games. Penalty flag is thrown. A couple penalty flags are thrown right at the line of scrimmage, and everybody's kicking around and having a little scrum. Have to listen in. Looks like a couple people were jumping. Not exactly sure who it was. Well, it's a great situation for Nebraska. You got first and goal inside the five. Randy Chris Dahl, our referee. Offside on the defense. The quarter will be extended by one play. You know, that happens sometimes in goal line situations because the defensive players are trying to crowd the line of scrimmage so that they don't create an opening. And what happens, you inadvertently line up offside sometimes. That's a common penalty. That's why the guy at the end of the line of scrimmage has got to say, hey, you got to get back a little bit, you guys inside. Kind of like Ola, that might be his job. That's a great view of it right there. Crouch, look out! And Nebraska recovers, but Eric Crouch took a huge hit by Steve Erickson, the senior out of Richardson, Texas. What an emotional lift that would have been for Missouri if they would have been uh -oh. able to recover that fumble. Not only do you prevent the touchdown, obviously, but you get the ball. And that's the way the third quarter will come to end. Uh, come to an end, and Eric Crouch will remember the final play. 33 to three, with one quarter left. Artie Gigantino joins me once again, and Artie, Nebraska is in a rhythm right now. Absolutely. They're in a zone, and I think Frank Solich is doing a great job of calling plays, but they have confidence in what their quarterback can do, but also that running game. You're starting to see that running game real cranked up. Frank Solich will try to hammer it in here right now. It is second down and goal to go. Ball is on the 11-yard line. Buck Calder in the backfield. Crouch three-step drop looking for the end zone, and it is incomplete, knocked away at the last second. Intended for Wilson Thomas, the freshman out of Omaha, Nebraska. Andre Roberson, pretty good job on the coverage, number 15, the junior out of Houston, Texas. You know, Wilson's six foot five, and they practiced this play last night. He looks like a basketball player. He's a guy that high jumps six seven. He's a triple jumper, but he does look like a basketball forward. And that's the kind of person you want to throw a fade to in the end zone, because he's going to tower over any defensive back. Well, that brings up a third down and goal from the 11. Pretty good defensive stand by the Missouri Tigers. The big play, of course, Eric Crouch getting hit from behind and losing the football. Crouch, the pick, pitch back to Buck Calder. Shaking and making his way down to the three, and he will be kicked out of Pater. And Eric Crouch that time just got leveled as he dished the ball off the buck halter. But that's the price you pay when you're a quarterback in this offense. Somebody's going to hit you, at least most of the times, defense will hit the quarterback each and every time. It's a free shot at the quarterback. And Nebraska sending in their field goal unit. They're going for it. No, they're going to go for it now. Started to bring in the field goal unit, but on... Fourth down and goal from the four. Crouch stays in. Now look at this formation. You're going to see Nebraska lined up in the triple I. They've got three players stacked behind the quarterback. Crouch keeps it, looking to put it up in the air. The corner of the end zone, and the pass is incomplete again. It was Andre Roberson on the coverage, intended for Tracy Wistrom. 
the younger brother of Grant Wistrom. Well, it may be a little too little too late, but it was a pretty good defensive stand by the Tigers. Hats off to them on that one. And Robertson made a good play, and he was not fooled by the play-action fake in the backfield because when you look at that formation, you think run. And that's what Nebraska utilizes it for most of the time. And the Missouri offense will begin first and ten on their three-yard line. Well, defense has been the word for the Nebraska Cornhuskers tonight. Dangerous position, though, for Missouri. Two wide outs, bottom of your straight eye formation. Farmer lets it fly, a little waggling, pass is incomplete. Intended for Eric Spencer out of Houston, Texas. And he had the step. You know, he was open. There was really no help from the safety that time. That was very much of a catchable ball. Now watch what happens. The safety's up here. He's playing run, and he's thinking inside. And all Spencer's running right down the field at the bottom, and he's got a chance to catch that. Nebraska puts a lot of pressure on their quarterbacks by playing man-to-man -man without a lot of help from the safety. But they're good enough to do it. Absolutely. Well, Jim Gordy, we saw him looking off the field a few moments ago. Palmer's come in. They're trying to hammer away with Zane Gilmore now for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's check in with our college football Saturday studios and Kevin Frazier. Kevin, Penn State hangover for Miami? Absolutely. And boy, you know, if you're Butch Davis, you don't want that to happen because you got to go beat East Carolina to get Miami back in the national spotlight. On third down. Palmer rolls out, has a man, and is complete up to the 14-yard line. Kareem Rott wise out of Baton Rouge. Here's the penalty flag. Penalty flag is thrown. Fans started booing. Larry Smith doesn't like it. And it might just give the Tigers a first down. Oh, personal foul against Missouri. Larry Smith wants to know who's it on. That was after the play, obviously. He's pleading his case, but you have a feeling he's not going to win it. Now we have an official's timeout. Now they're going to talk about because I don't think the officials uh, necessarily agree on it. And, and we don't have instant replay in college yet, do we? I don't <laughs> We could have it. <laughs> we could be the judge count. and jury up here. Now they're going to check for the first down or to see exactly how far it is. They're going to measure it first. Okay, it's a fourth down. It's a fourth down. I'll tell you, Ron, I did not see it. I didn't either. Unless a coach was out of the coaching box or it came from the sideline somehow, but I did not see a personal foul. And this is a tough choice for Larry Smith here because you'd like to go for it on fourth down if it's only, you know, inches. Well, that was close. That was very, very close. Was he kick him or something here? I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know why. I, don't. I guess he thought he was trying to kick him. Well, that kid's kicked me hard the that. Offense. It'll be half the distance to the goal. Fourth down. Didn't see it. Unless he, unless, like right. you said, he, he interpreted the fact that, that Wise was trying to kick the defender. Update on Jim Doherty, by the way. He has a strained left knee, and he will not return. So the quarterbacking job belongs in the hand of Kirk Farmer, but not on this one because they're going to have to kick it away. Once again, if you just joined us early in the first quarter, two bad snaps by Missouri on punts led to nine Nebraska points. Since then, they've been doing quite well. And the field position tonight has been all Nebraska. Just like here now, Nebraska's going to get the ball inside the 50 again, regardless of what kind of punt it is. Mm -hmm. Craig always talked about field position. Yeah, yeah, well, two tough teams, that's what happens. And the kicking game dictates field position in football, and so do turnovers. Nebraska not going for it. This is a nice kick by Gilpin. At the 42, Bobby Newcomb dancing away. Look out. Boy, 
boy, he is so dangerous. You put him with Joe Walker back there, and that is a couple of punt return guys that can really explode. And that was some shake and bake there. He made about four Missouri cover people miss him. We got to remember, though, when he was a freshman, I'm talking about Bobby Newcomb, he returned 12 punts for 244 yards. Now, this guy is a big time punt returner. And you know, maybe for this football team with Crouch at quarterback and him at wingback, it is the best of both worlds because you get two top flight athletes on the football field at the same time and touching the football. Well, Missouri last in the NCAA in net punting. That was a 47 yard kick, 17 on the return. Just straight ahead. Dan Alexander getting playing time again. Alexander. Trying to bang over that right side of Dominic Rayola, Russ Hochstein. Eric Clemens, how about a national car rental game summary? Well, here you see it in Nebraska, especially going to the ground attack when they got the big lead. Buck Halter over 124 yards today. Crouch, 143 yards passing. And as we said, look at the rushing plays, 41 for 249. But look at the passing plays, 143. Back to you, Ron. All right, Eric, Dan Alexander over the right side, banging his way. Okay, Artie, I'm going to put you on a spot. Give a grade to this Nebraska offense. And there were a lot of people questioning it after last week's game against Southern Miss, but put a little asterisk there. Southern Miss is a good football team. Oh, yeah, Southern Miss is a real good football team. This is a B-plus effort by, uh, in my mind tonight because they threw the ball early in the game when they had to. But this guy and Dan Alexander and Eric Crouch have got this offense going. You look at Coral Buckholter. He's happy tonight because he's carried the football and he made some big plays. And they're showing they can't all Yeah, I, I think this is absolutely Absolutely a B plus, and it's not over yet. Crouch keeps it showing some running room. Inside the 20, still on his feet, inside the 10 down to the nine yard line. Make that an A minus. <laughs> <laughs> Fair weather. Clarence Jones, number eight, comes across the line of scrimmage. He sees the option come at him, but this time he gets fooled and he goes for the pitch. Now his assignment was to feather the quarterback, but you got to take the quarterback first. Crouch does a great job of reading his eyes, turns it up the football field, and makes a big game. Option football is very difficult to defend. Nebraska option football very difficult to defend also. This time straight ahead, the Missouri defense there to meet him. I always felt Nebraska's offense and their option offense was great because they did such a great job of blocking. And their fullbacks are blockers mostly. Now you saw, you know, Euler hit it up in there. You see Miller once in a while hit it up in there. But their fullbacks do a great, great job of blocking. Just a reminder, USC and the Oregon Ducks coming up immediately following this game here on Fox Sports Net. Eric Crouch now 15 carries, 92 yards, trying to become the first 100-yard rusher this year, which is something kind of odd when you talk about Nebraska run of the football. Tonight, 278 total. Crouch right side, gives it up to Alexander. Ho, oh, pops big time Carlos Posey. He just lowered the shoulder and put every bit of 245 into him. Boy, is he a, is he a stud. And when he gets running, he is tough to tackle. We have to listen to this one. This was pad on pad. Check your dentures. But here's what Nebraska does, though. They got you a little bit tired now. Your defense has got to run up and down the line of scrimmage because you're chasing the quarterback. You get a little tired, and then you just hammer them up inside with the power game, then you loosen them up with the pitch game on the option. Third and goal, ball is on the four-yard line. Crouch has to give it up. Alexander right side, and he strolls into the right side of the end zone for the touchdown. Alexander's second rushing touchdown of the year. Well, they're showing that they're back. Rhythm and timing with new quarterbacks, two quarterbacks, sometimes takes two or three or four games to get back into a groove. You know, one other thing people will forget, Nebraska missed in spring practice 11 starters either during the entire spring or during part of the spring. Bobby Newcomb wasn't there the entire spring. Well, Dan Alexander with touchdown number two, running the football on the year. Coming right at you. The extra point was good and a race to my bumble.
Well, the Huskers have not been out Fox tonight. They lead handily, the number six team in the country. 40 to 3 is the score, and you can see the Missouri sidelines and the dejection, but there is still a lot of football left. Yeah, you know what? They cannot use this game as the end of the season. That's the problem when you play a big game like this early in the year. They've got a lot of football left to play. Missouri can go to a bowl game again this Absolutely. year. They're a very good young football team. And a bowl win last year. The kick into the end zone, and they're going to wisely take a seat, Ricardo Rhodes. Nebraska does have a way of playing well on the road. You can see the Road Warriors in the 90s. They've only lost 7 of 41 games. That is the best in Division 1A. Yeah, they're pretty good at home, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, Frank Solich is, is as a head coach now, is 4-3 and three on the road, and he's 8-1 and one at home. But, you know, he's had some tough games on the road. And uh, losing the bowl game a year ago uh, to Arizona in the Holiday Bowl. But Frank has done a good job of keeping this football team together and not allowing the distractions of some pro player problems to bring down what so many positives are in this program. The pass to Lehman complete. He double catches it. But it is good. Just a reminder. He'll be coming up next. That was Lehman's 25th game, which he has caught at least one pass, and that ties the Missouri record. Try to break it next week versus Memphis. Barber is going to be dumped. Nebraska now playing a lot of reserves. You see Smith come into the picture, number 92. But th that's why they're a good football team, is because they have the ability to play in games like this, some of their younger players, to get them a shot at making some plays. Well, it's, it's, it's a good time to do it. It's a great time to do it. It's a great time to do it. But there's pressure on these young guys because they don't want to give up yardage that hurts the statistics of the first team defense. Justin Smith out of Sherman, Texas. Farmer takes a hit. Ball is loose, but it rolls out of bounds. Boy, Nebraska looks like they're just teeing off even with their reserves here with just uh, over uh, 8.50 to play in the fourth. He's hurting. Frank Stella, number 34, just drilled him on the corner. Stella is a guy who's an outside linebacker, but he also returns kicks, and he's an explosive guy. And, you know, poor Kurt Farmer here, he's six foot five. he's about 210 pounds. That's a big, lean target that a guy like Stella can take off into. And that's what happened that time. Coaches call him the real deal. Well, it's still third down, and it's a bunch. Third and 14. From the shotgun, Kirk Farmer. Here comes the rush by Nebraska. Farmer throwing it out of rope. Batted away at the last second. Dewan Gross, the redshirt freshman out of Garfield Heights, Ohio, with the pass breakup. It was intended for Eric Spencer. Good move to the football that time by Gross. The ball's in the air. He sees the football, and he plays volleyball with the football. That's, that's excellent concentration, and secondary coach George Darlington is just going to love that. Especially when one of your young players make a play like that. Yeah. Breaking on the football is what they try to teach those guys. And once again, Missouri forced to kick it away as the stands start to empty here at Royal Field. The expectations were so high. Larry Smith told us yesterday it's not can they do it this year? It's will they do it? Well, that's they felt the last two years they could play. Well, that's what happens, though, when you just lose the last two games by seven points. They weren't blowouts. They felt mentally and physically they were able to compete with Nebraska and prevent the blowout. Well, Nebraska calls a timeout with 849 left to play in the ball game, and they lead Missouri 40 to 3. But right now, let's go back to Columbia, guys. In the fourth quarter, Nebraska winning handily, and Missouri's going to have to kick it away. Gilpin's going to have to ice the leg down after tonight. Since the fiasco in the opening quarter, he has done a nice job. Bobby Newcomb again, exploding. 40 yards on the kick, but a 12-yard return. So Newcomb with a 17-yard return and a 12-yard return. Coaches love seeing that. 
You have to respect him. We saw that today with Kansas State and Iowa State punting to David Allen returns it for a touchdown. That gives Nebraska another weapon. You have to start kicking away from guys like yeah, that. Yeah, but the problem is you can't kick away from him because you're going to kick it to Joe Walker, who's also an excellent return guy. I think Nebraska's got a great weapon back there with that return game. And a new quarterback come in, Jeff Perino, the senior out of Durango, Colorado. Has had some major knee problems and some injuries, has been granted another year of eligibility, and it's great to see Frank Solich allowing him to take a couple of snaps here. Perino keeps it, has some running room up to the 45, to the 50 penalty flag has been thrown. Clarence Jones runs him out of bounds. Perino, a 6'2", 210-pound senior. But as we mentioned, we do have a penalty, and it will go against the Huskers. At the beginning of the game, we talked about the keys. Let's revisit those and kind of update things. Well, Nebraska, we said they couldn't turn the ball over. They've had two tonight, but they haven't been hurt by him. Maintain their defense intensity. Absolutely. This defense has played marvelous football tonight. And lastly, the punt and kickoff returns. They're averaging 10 yards a return. But what that doesn't tell you is the great field position that their returns have set up. So I think they've done tonight what they set out to do. Now, Frank Solich is not going to like the two turnovers, but but he can live with it because he's gotten 40 points. Mm -hmm. There you see Perino sat out 19 to 97 and 1998 because of a medical hardship. The numbers on him. He was a student assistant last year. Oh. Helped him coach. Three major knee surgeries. Actually, back in 96, he was listed as the backup to Scott Frost. But the knees just kind of gave out. Most doctors felt he would never play again. That hasn't been the case. And the Missouri Keys. Well, not very good so far because we wa they wanted first down success, but they're only averaging 3.1 yards per play on first down. Control Eric Crouch. They have not done that. He's had 235 total yards, but he's been sensational at running the football, and obviously their punting unit let them down at the beginning of the game by giving up not only a safety, but great field position, which resulted in a touchdown. This is Duran Diedrich from Canada. Can't get the handle on it. Maybe his hands were too warm. Perino, pretty good pitch. Diedrich, a six foot, 250 pound freshman. Boy, Frank's going with some of the young guys tonight. You know, you look at option football, the option is hard to play. This pitch goes behind him, and he reaches back with one hand and misses it. Boy, there's a lot of timing and precision between quarterback and pitch man on the option. And Frank Solich knows it better than anybody. That pitch man has got to keep his eyes on the football because that baby can come at him at any time. Loss of seven brings up a third down and 24. This is Nebraska's passing formation now with four wide receivers in the game and no tight end. Riddle does not pass, keeps it on the ground. Gate has a little running room. Crosses the 40 up to the 45, just past the original line of scrimmage before Julian Jones brings him down. So Perino with his first two carries for the Nebraska Cornhuskers in his career. And what you try to do with that, you want to either throw from it or you spread the defense out and you run the option, which is exactly what he did that time. But as you saw, because the defense was spread out, there was a hole up inside in which he hit. Not much to cheer about for the Missouri faithful that are still in the stands. Over 68,000 came to see this football game tonight. And it started out slowly and it got worse for Missouri. And I still believe those two mishaps on the punt really hurt him in terms of momentum and confidence. This kick will sail into the end zone and Missouri will begin first and 10 from their own 20 with 6.55 to play in the ball game. A 50 yard, 55 yard kick by Dan Hadenfeld will return in a moment. Pat Mingucci of the defense of Missouri, the junior out of Holt Summit, Missouri, and the look tells it all tonight. He's put a lot of effort in, but it has been all Nebraska in this football game. Kirk Farmer, Zane Gilmore remain in the football game. Once again, Jim Doherty, strained left knee, will not return. Farmer straight drop, fires it, incomplete. And for a Dr. Pepper game break, let's send it over to Kevin Frazier. Kevin? Guys, the feel-good story of the day and also the biggest upset, 27-23. East Carolina knocks off Miami. They're playing the game in North Carolina State, of course, because of Hurricane Floyd and what it did to their school. Those goalposts are going back to Greenville, and the students deserve them. 
Boy, the upsets continue in college football. East Carolina, big win over Miami. Ooh, that hurts for Butch Davis. Second down and 10, ball out of 20. Farmer straight drop, double pumps, and he is going to be dropped. Back at the 18-yard line, another sack for that Nebraska defense. Wickman comes up with the sack. The executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. Coordinating for two's producer of college football Saturday is Roy Hamilton. Today's game was produced by Mike Helling, directed by Ken Fouts. College Football Saturday Studio Show was produced by Loy Maxson and directed by Joe Whitus. Vice President of Field Operations is Andrea Jenkins. Thank you, folks. Third down and 11 for Farmer. Now you just don't want to get Farmer hurt. The rush is coming. Farmer launching it deep, has a man overthrown. Intended for Kareem Wise, the senior out of Baton Rouge. Yeah, you know, it was a well-thrown pass. His accuracy was a little bit off, but these are the kind of situations that give young quarterbacks and receivers like Wise experience in playing the game together. Now, Wise is a senior. He'll be gone, but this is great for Farmer to see this kind of pressure because you don't get it like that in practice, obviously. Once again, Gilpin set to kick it away. One thing Larry Smith has worked on, he's worked on a couple of things. First of all, he wants the ball back in less in about a second on the snap. Last year they had a hang time of 3.8. He says, I want it 4-2 or better. Well, 4-5 is great, but it, you know, sometimes guys just can't do it. I mean, you either have the leg or you don't. Again, the punt coverage against some running room. Joe Walker this time cannot get away. 35 yards on the kick, we'll call it six on the return. And if Missouri really wants to get to that next level, they have to continue to work on that kicking game. Reminder, SC and Oregon coming up straight ahead. Big time because, you know, no one pays attention, talking about in the media or in the fans and the stands, to the kicking game until something goes really good or really bad. You know, it's always something neutral until something negatively or positively big happens. Well, Nebraska into their flip card offense, which means we have to look at our flip cards to find out who's in the ball game because they're not on our spotting boards. Pitch back to Diedrich out of Ontario, Canada, able to pick up a couple of yards. Do you think Frank Solich re recruits in Canada now? I think he recruits anywhere in the world to get a good football player. As we take a look at Carlos Polk, and he has played, I think, great for this defense. We talked about him at the Open. His problem tonight is the ball never got to him. That's right. Because his defenders in front of him were making the plays before they got to the linebacker area. That's a problem when you have a great defensive line. Your linebackers don't have big time numbers and tackles. And Charlie McBride and Frank Solich, as you look at Frank here, love it when their linebackers don't have to make a lot of tackles. You tip your hat to your defensive line. Second down and seven for the Huskers. Clock not running fast enough for Missouri. Diedrich again stuffed this time behind the line of scrimmage. Missouri, it'll be 36 consecutive games that they've lost to a top 10 team. Last time they beat somebody ranked in the AP top 10 was 1981. Mississippi State 14 to 3. Haven't beaten a top 10 team at home since 1974 when they put a goose egg on Arizona State 9 nothing. It's great to have depth as we look at Dietrich here in the tailback eye back position because someone is going to get nicked up during the course of the year, whether it's Buckholter or Alexander. It's nice to know you got a young kid like this to put in there. And you look at those third down conversions for Missouri. Well, you can't win when you're going one out of 12. This is also the least number of points for their offense since 96, and that was at Nebraska. Dietrich just pounding away, and the youngster getting a little playing time. But you know, if you're Missouri, you didn't know what kind of team you had because of your first two opponents, UAB and Western Michigan. You know, something about these eyebacks at Nebraska, they all look the same. They, do, don't they? they all look the same. They got the same <laughs> smile, the same eyes, and they run real good and they run real hard. Well, we had a penalty flag thrown on the far side of the field. We'll have to listen in to see what it was. It's Nebraska use it using everybody that boarded the plane. I Holding say. on the offense. It'll be a 10 yard penalty and remain third down. And Nebraska backed up again. 
Third that, down and 12 and for that, the Huskers. And that's going to disappoint Frank Solich because he knows to win the big games, you can't shoot yourself in the foot with penalties. And, and Nebraska traditionally, as you've talked about, and you're so right, has not been a penalized football team. They've been very, very efficient. And I think you as a coach, Artie, you look at the score, but there's so much beyond the score. Programming note, just to remind you, the 1999 playoffs. Well, they've had something to cheer about, make that six-hour drive a little bit easier. And Nebraska's going to have to kick it away on fourth down and ten. Aiden Felton has had a nice night. They were worried about punting this year. No worries with this young man. That is one bright spot for Missouri as far as the kick return. Number 21, Artie Johnson on the 19-yard return after the 38-yard kick by Hayden Felt. You know what's even more amazing about Hayden Felt? He was second in the country coming into the game with 48 and a half yards per punt. Is that when you play in Lincoln, you're kicking into the wind half the time, and the ball doesn't go very far. But that's just amazing what kind of cannon this guy has got in his right leg. And he's another former walk-on yeah. in Nebraska, which we talk a lot about when you do a Nebraska game. And I was telling Charlie McBride last night, we were talking about it, he is a defensive coordinator's best friend when you have a great punter. <laughs> because he buys you wonderful field position. I always had the punters and the kickers come to the defensive meetings treated them just like defensive football players. Layman in motion number 84. The pass is incomplete. Try to pull that one out of the wallet intended for Kent, but he did continue his streak 25 consecutive games tying Kenny Holly's record here at Missouri. He's been banged up a little bit. Farmer's been banged up. Of course, Doherty, the other quarterback, got banged up tonight. And Missouri has to take on Memphis next week, which you'll see on Fox Net. And and Memphis gave uh, Tennessee all they could handle today. Tennessee winning by one. They got to regroup after a big game. Memphis always plays good against Tennessee. A couple years ago yeah. when they beat Tennessee in the Liberty Bowl, I did that game, and boy, they just fly around. Farmer straight drop, pass is dropped. Now we thought the tight end would come more into play tonight. Unfortunately, it hasn't. On well, this Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Fox Sports Net, it's hardcore football. This week's guest, three-time Pro Bowler, Seth Joyner. Joyner, of course, played 13 seasons in the NFL and offers a unique insight into the game. It's hardcore football Tuesday at 8 o'clock on Fox Sports Net. How the fans continuing to leave. Looks like Christmas, doesn't it? Christmas in Columbia here. Unfortunately, it was 85 degrees today. And there is Charlie McBride. Got a smile on his face. and. And he, it's Christmas for him today, I'll guarantee you. He didn't have to blow up today. No, either, he didn't he? blow up, but his defensive statistics have just been outstanding this year. His defense has only given up two touchdowns. On third and ten, Farmer's pass is complete. And the fans give Travis Garvin, the young freshman out of Bradenton, Florida, a round of applause. And the number nine looks familiar in Bradenton, Florida. He might put the connection together. Our Peter Warren. Those two guys were high school teammates. He's wearing the number. Peter said, I want you to wear my number. Hey, we played basketball together. Yeah, and, you know, he signed with Tulane out of high school to go to Tulane and be a quarterback. But academically, it didn't work out for him there. He ended up transferring to Missouri, and now he's a wide receiver. Yvonne Pat Black, the low setback. When Ward makes all his money next year, I hope he takes care of it. <laughs> Another catch by Travis Garvin. So with 2.36 to play in the football game, Garvin with a couple of catches. You know what I, you know what I love about Travis Garvin? He's a, he's a vertical jump of 37 and a half. I mean, that's getting up there. He's got some spring. You're going to see him right here, run down the field, catch the football, put his shoulder down, and hold on to it. Big, young, tough, athletic receiver. Pick up a 33 on the play. He was a 19-point scorer in a high school basketball as his team won the state championship one year. 2.27 to play. Farmer, straight drop, looking for Pater. Garvin again, caught it. Touchdown, Missouri! Pulls it down and makes the play. 
Three catches, 71 yards on the drive. The last one, a 25-yard touchdown toss from Farmer. Farmer's sixth touchdown of the year. And that is Garvin's first. The extra point is good. So with 2.13 left to play in the football game, Farmer to Garvin, they connect. They get the touchdown, and it's 40 to 10, 2.13 left to play. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedules for uh, Missouri. They go to Memphis, then they go back to the Big 12 schedule. Right? Yeah, Colorado's lost today, but they're a, they're playing very well. Iowa State lost today, but it was a heart wrencher. You know, you got a chance against Kansas, obviously, and Texas Tech. When you play in the Big 12, it's not easy any week. And you know, we're seeing that around the country today. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. So, you got to strap it on. I mean, we thought last week big upsets. You know, Cincinnati over Wisconsin. You and know, uh, it happened again this week. And that's the one positive thing about playing Nebraska this early. Number one, you get them out of the way. But number two, you get a barometer as to where your football team is at in relation to the Big 12. Saw the scoring by quarters, and that equals to Nebraska leading 40 to 10. 2.13 to play in this football game. And if you're Frank Solich, even though you have a huge lead, you're not going to lose this football game. I guarantee he is not pleased with giving up that touchdown. No, he's not. And you know, again, when I was coaching, I always screamed and hollered and made a big deal when we blew somebody out. Everybody feels bad when you lose a close game or you win a, you know, but when you, when you blow somebody out like the press, that's the best time to make corrections with your football team because you've got their attention. And everybody's smiling, everybody's happy, and they're more, you know, lenient towards taking criticism. So to me, when you win big, that's when you really got to coach your toughest and your hardest. In other words, don't celebrate all week. Exactly right. And, and I know the Nebraska coaches will not. Randy Stella, Joe Walker, and John Belushi set to return the kick. Looking for an onside kick. Nobody even touched it. Went out of bounds. Penalty play. Didn't go 10. It's got to go 10 yards before you can attempt to recover. Nebraska did a smart thing. They just backed off. Well, you know what that is? That's called good coaching because the Nebraska return team knew the rules and knew what to do. And Larry Smith continues to coach. Talking to his kicker, Brad Hamerick, the sophomore out of Chesterfield, Missouri. Coaches Kick don't stop coaching, do they? Elect to take the ball at the inbound spot. First and 10. And you know, Larry Smith, his his duties, so to speak, in the special teams area, he coaches the punter and he coaches the place kicker. I mean, that's his job to coach those guys. And he was giving him a piece of his mind that time. And Nebraska will have it first and 10 from Mizzou 41. Diedrich left side. 2.03 to play. This is the longest 10 minutes, I think, in Missouri history. When you're coaching on the sidelines and you're in this situation already, how long is it? Well, I was never in a situation like this. <laughs> We're always winning, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. But it goes long. And, and you're, you're, like you said, you're kidding, but, you, but you're absolutely right. You, you look at the clock and you say, tick. It's got to go faster. I thought seconds were a lot quicker than that. And every time the ball goes out of bounds, you say, no, stay in bounds. Yeah. Please stay in bounds. Second down and five for Nebraska. Jeff Perino getting a couple of snaps here. Getting a couple runs. His first since having the three major knee surgeries. Just a reminder, we want to update you on baseball Thursday at 7 o'clock. It'll be the Braves versus the Mets and Padres Diamondbacks, 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. And then on Friday, Cubs Cardinals or the Padres and the Diamondbacks all gets underway. Eastern or 9.30 Eastern time. You'll see one or the other on our special edition of Baseball Thursday on Friday here on Fox Sports Net. That was good for a first down. First and 10 balls on the 30-yard line. Deep right side. This young man showing a little speed, little moves. 
Well, the brass is cranking it up tonight. They, they've had over 450 yards, total offense, and the Nebraska machine is just rolling down the field. Well, Nebraska, of course, hosts Oklahoma State next week. Then they host Iowa State. Then they go to Texas on October 23rd. Hosting a and on the 6th. Hosting Kansas State. And they close it out on the 26th versus Colorado. Not easy for them also. Circle that October 23rd date, folks, with Texas in Austin. 80,000 plus Memorial Stadium. Looking for the first down, needed to get just inside the 20. And that should do it. Larry Smith going over to congratulate Frank Solich, but it was a good game for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, number sixth in the country, and they could improve on that. Part of your final thoughts on the 40 to 10 victory by Nebraska. Well, the machine got rolling again tonight with Nebraska, and I think the move with Eric Crouch right now is looking like a, 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 a part of brilliance by, by Frankie Solich because he is the key to this Nebraska offense and getting moving. So Nebraska is back, not that it ever left, but people were critical that they weren't churning up enough points or enough yards, but they're back. 476 total yardage. They rushed for 333, which should put a smile on that man's face as Nebraska wins the ball game, the final again, 40 to 10. Just a reminder, coming up following the break, we'll head it back to Kellen and Kevin at our studio show at the Fox College Football Saturday Studios. Then, of course, USC and Oregon coming up straight ahead for Artie Gigantino and Eric Clemens. I'm Rob Thulin. Stay tuned. More football straight ahead right here on Fox Sports Net.